Good morning, fourth grade. Today we are going to be using to prepare for our test that you will have this upcoming week. We are going to be reviewing the different material and questions on the test. During this unit, we learn about different environments. Environment is what is made up of air, water, and all the organisms like plants and animals that surround and influence an area. There are many different kinds of environments. Some are wet and hot, and some are cold and dry, or some are even hot and dry. Let's review, let's look at some different environments that we looked at and what are their characteristics. First environment we have is a rainforest. A rainforest is a tropical environment. It is an environment that is very wet because it's very rainy. But it is also very hot in temperature. An environment has its soil. It's very weak since it's on the ground level of all the trees. And it's very hard for the sun to reach it. So the soil is very shallow and weak. One of the organisms like plants that we find in a rainforest is lots and lots of trees, how you see in this picture. But there is also flowers and moss that can be found in a rainforest environment. Some animals that we find in a rainforest environment include monkeys, sloths, jaguars, and even different types of birds. Now let's look at our second environment. Second environment is a desert. A desert is an environment that has very dry weather, which means it receives little rain and is very, very hot. Because of this temperature, the soil in a desert is very rocky or sandy. Uh, not much plants can grow in a dry, hot, rocky environment. Only certain plants grow, in, and these plants are able to adapt in the weather, like cacti or mesquite trees, which don't need much water to be able to grow. Some of the animals in a desert include spiders, reptile, tortoises, or big horn sheep. All these different animals are able to adapt to the hot weather by using the sand or different types of features to keep themselves cool in a hot environment. Let's look at one more temp one more environment that we have, which is called a tundra. A tundra is a cold environment, but it is very dry. It is an environment that is very cold and snowy. A tundra is very cold. The soil is frozen. It has something that is called permafrost. Permafrost means that the soil that is underneath the first layer is completely frozen solid. That doesn't give much room for much plants to grow, except things like grass, shrubs here and there, and certain herbs. There is a limited amount of, pl of plants, and there's also a limited amount of animals. Animals we find in the tundra are arctic hares, arctic foxes, snowy owls, and caribou. All type of animals that are able to survive in a cold environment. Remember, environments are the different parts like the water, the air, the soil, and all the organisms. Let's continue reviewing for our test to find out and see what other material will be on our test. During this unit, we also learn about organisms. Organisms are all the living things that we find in environments like plants and animals. When we're thinking about living things, remember there are certain things that make a living thing. It must be able to move by itself. It must be able to grow and change over years 
and also reproduce. Living things need air, water, and food to be able to survive. These factors are what make up a living thing. Some examples of living things that we found were plants, animals like sheep and turtles, and even people or students like you. Those are all examples of living things. These are all living things because living things need three things to survive. Air, food, and water. If an, if an environment can provide these three functions for a living thing, they will be able to survive. Air to breathe, food to stay nourished, and water to stay hydrated. Now there are living things, but there is also non-living things. Non-living things are not alive. They don't move, they don't grow, they don't change or reproduce. Non-living things are examples like toys, rocks, water, or a table. Non-living things are used every day, but they really don't need to survive. They don't need water, food, or air to um, be able to survive because they are non-living. The information that we just saw on our presentation is what will be presented on our test next week. Before, so now that we have reviewed, let's go back to our Google Classroom and let's go to test review. Uh, so we can review. Remember, you can use the study guide to go over the vocabulary words in the different environments. Today, we're going to go on Quizlet so we can review. Once you arrive on Quizlet, you'll have the, all these flashcards that provide the different vocabularies for the test. There are five different choices here on how you can study. And there is even a game. Let's start out with the learning one so that we can we can review the, um, the different material that we will have on our test. So on this first card, we have an example of air, water, and food. Which of these words does air, water, and food represent? Is it non-living things? Is it living things? Is it the needs of living things? Or is it an environment? You said needs of the living things. That is correct. Now let's look at this next word. We have the air, water, and all organisms that surround and influence an area. Which one of these words down here matches the air, water, and organisms that surround and influence the area? Is it non-living things? Is it environment? Is it rainforest? Or is it living things? If you, if you are stuck on a word, you can always go back to Google Classroom and open up your flashcards to review. Which of these words represents the air, water, and all organisms that surround and influence the area? Is it non-living things? Is it environment? Is it rainforest? Or is it a living thing? If you said environment, that is correct. Now we have our first type of environment. We are going to read what the description says, and then we have to click which environment it is describing. This says the soil has permafrost, is frozen underground with cold and dry temperature. The plants are grass, shrubs, and herbs, and animals are arctic hare, arctic foxes, snowy owls, and caribou. Which of these option represents the environment described above. Is it rainforest? Is it desert? Is it environment? Or is it tundra? 
If you said tundra, that is correct. A tundra is a cold and dry environment that has limited amount of plants and it is frozen underground. All right, now we have our next environment. Our second environment says it is an environment that has wet and hot temperature with shallow and weak soil. Plants are trees, flowers, and moss. Some animals that we find in this environment are monkeys, sloths, jaguars, snakes, beetles, and ants. What environment does this describe? Is it desert? Is it rainforest? It's describing living things? Or is it describing in um, the word environment? If you said rainforest, that is correct. All right, let's continue to figure out which environment is being described. This environment has dry and hot temperature, and it has very rocky and sandy soil. Some of the plants are cacti and mesquite trees, and animals that we find in this environment are spiders, reptiles, tortoises, big horn sheep. Which of these words describe this environment? Is it living thing? Is it rainforest? Is it tundra? Or is it desert? You said desert. That is correct. The dry and hot environment with rocky and sandy soil is a desert. Here's our next definition. This does not is not alive because they do not move, grow, change, or reproduce. They don't need air, water, or food. Things like rocks, toys, or a table. Which of these words is defined by saying it's not alive and they do not need air, water, or food? Is it living things? Is it rainforest? Is it environment or is it non-living things? If you said non-living things, that is correct. Non-living things do not move, grow, change, or reproduce. They also don't need air, water, or food. Our next definition says all individual living things. Which of these words represents the all individual living things? Is it environment? Is it rainforest? Is it tundra? Or is it organism? You said organism that is correct. Organism is another word that can be used to represent all living things.